Eleven One, welcome back to Fosfogy 2021. We will be starting now the, uh, uh, the evening sessions with Harris, uh, who will be presenting a look beyond the edge with visual field. Uh, if you want to um, present yourself, Harris, or if no, I can proceed to the video. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jose. Yeah, please, please go ahead and and uh, play my video. It's pre-recorded, and I'll I have to take questions uh, after the video. So yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. So let's start. Introduction to visual field. I'm glad you're still with us, Buenos Aires. I hope to be online now to take your questions. Thank you. Buenos dias, Argentina. I'm coming to you from southeastern Australia, home to the Yuan people. My name is Harris and I'm a 30 year IT professional. I'm delighted to be able to present here at FOSS4G 2021. And believe it or not, it's actually 3 a.m. in Australia right now. So my talk is pre recorded, but I hope to be online after to take your questions. The climate's going to need all the help it can get, Geo people. I'm going to briefly introduce an application I've developed, give a quick demonstration and end with some ways that you can get involved. But first, I have a question for you. Is there an elephant in the room? I mean, right where you're watching this, is there an elephant with you? You might have seen a lot of elephants in this conference so far, and I'm sure those elephants have really great features. I don't dispute that for one second, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, 77% of you are probably looking at it right now. I mean, something that supports that, what I'm talking about. That is, of course, WebSQL. Did you know that most browsers have an inbuilt relational database that supports SQL syntax? And it's embedded with zero installation. It's fast to load and index. It's scalable and can handle big data. And it's supported in 77% of the browsers. Why aren't we using SQL? Because of this lack of standard support. But that was 10 years ago. So why are we using SQL? The web ecosystem has continued to evolve since 2010. We now have cores, HTTP headers, and the availability of large open relational data sets, amongst other things. So now I'd like to introduce Visual Field. It was developed, the core of it in 2019, makes heavy use of WebSQL. It's essentially a versatile single HTML file, 23,000 lines of code, works with the limited data sets. You can load and manipulate and visualize your data. There's no HTML or JavaScript programming, and it's an open source application built on other open source components. So you can ingest data sets or files or URL, import, export, CSV, import, export, workflow, metadata, import, export, your database dumps, so you can transfer it to another instance, uh, export SQL dumps and import media. Visual field is intended to be loaded in a versatile way. You can use it as an online application, offline, as a standalone file or as a progressive web application. It's got a series of workflows, sequences to support workflow automation, and you can manipulate your data sets using SQL, custom functions, direct editable content, and you can save your workflows as metadata. Visual Field is built on a whole spectrum of open source uh, JavaScript and CSS libraries. So there's a wide variety of visualizations available. Table visualizations are scalable for big data, Chart visualizations are scalable up to 10,000 data points for pi, line, bar, and scattered charts, up to four series. Maps are scalable up to 120,000 features, uh, six custom or leaflet styles. Heat maps are scalable for big data sets. Network visualizations support both logical and physical, scalable with an explore and walk the network mode. Uh, you can perform shortest path searches and you can save and reload your network graphs. Slideshows are scalable for media, and all visualizations can be incorporated into sequence workflows and combined with drill down URL links. I'm 
going to give a demonstration of Visual Field and I'm just going to do that by going to visualfield.org and I'm going to run Visual Field uh, uh, online here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to say that the example I'm going to show today is not going to be a perfect example because I will lead into the next part of my talk about that. If you want to see a more seamless example, just come and look at some of the examples on the website here. So uh, we're just going to load Visual Field there online. Now, uh, as part of saying that, I don't mean any uh, disrespect to uh, the publishers or the custodians of these data sets, but the data sets I'm going to use here uh, coming from datas.gov.ar and the first example I want to look at is this data set here which I'm not exactly sure what it represents because my Spanish is no good but I'm just going to uh, right click on this uh, CSV link here I'm going to copy that link address go back to the visual field and we'll see if we can import that as URLs so just by pasting the URL there and I will put in a table name I'll just call that table 1 and just go ahead and try to import that and you notice we get this error here now this error is typically indicative that that data set doesn't have cores HTTP headers but we'll just work with this in a manual way we can continue with this so we'll just go ahead and download that CSV and we'll just go back to visual field and just take that CSV that we manually downloaded instead of a URL, we've got it here and we'll just upload it there and there's our data set there, we've got our provinces and notice this field here, we've got some sort of percentage value here so let, the first thing we'll do is just see if we can show that as a chart visualization so we'll go to chart visualization, uh, select the table that we've just created which is that table there, we'll call this our chart as a description and for the title we'll just put our chart and for the x-axis column we'll put the province name and we'll order by the province name and the chart type we'll se select a bar chart with a fill and for the y column we'll select that percentage value there we'll just leave it like that we'll just save that and go ahead and run that and there's our chart there with our provinces and that percentage value shown there. But what we really want to do is show these provinces in some sort of map. So what I have found on datas.gov.ar, there's another data set here where we have some province centroids as CSVs. So I'm just going to download this data set. Just click on there and there it's downloaded. Go back to visual field and we'll just import that provinces data set. Take a look at it. So here we have uh, some sort of centroid latitude and centroid longitude and the province name. So now I'm going to combine those two data sets by way of creating a view. Now to assist me not having to type this, I've prepared some earlier. So I'm just going to run this and let's take a look at this. Here I'm going to create a view which is a simple cross join between those two data sets and I'm also going to manually assemble by string concatenation a WKT geometry. Now I could have used a custom function but I'll just manually assemble that string concatenation. I'll select another field as tooltip and there it's a simple simple cross join between those two data sets. So then I'm going to go to map visualization and we'll select that view that we've just created, map view, and we'll call this our map and the title we'll just call this our map and the geometry column will be that centroid WKT and the tooltip I will select as that column value as tooltip and we'll just save that and go ahead and run that. So there's our simple map that we've got and if I click on those centroids there you get the, the pop-up. If you hover over there you get the tooltip of the field that we've just uh, set up. But now let's look at getting some styling set up on this map. So to do the styling there's two things I'm going to do. I'll go back to SQL and I'll just drop that view to start with. Just drop that and I'm going to recreate that view uh, 
with a little bit more complexity to it. So in this case, I've got the WKT, the tooltip, but I'm also going to include a case expression where I'm going to translate that percentage value to some sort of HTML color. So then let's go back to our map visualization. And again, to save me time, I prepared one earlier. So I've got this one called our map two. Now let's just have a look at this. Over here in the custom styling, I'm setting the fill color to a column value of PCT, which is that percentage that I just set up as part of the case expression. I've then got some other values here, radius, uh, radius hover of 10, uh, fill opacity 0.9, weight of 0.5 to change the stroke color. So these custom styles are just leaflet path styles. So I've got that set up there. So let's just run that and have a look at that. So there's our map with a bit of styling on there. Uh, the fill color is based on the percentage value that we had before. And so that looks pretty good. But when we zoom into here, what has happened to Buenos Aires? We don't seem to have that on the map. So maybe there's something wrong with our join. So let's just go back and look at our table. So we'll just browse the tables here and let's have a look at this first data set that we loaded by browsing that. So there's Buenos Aires there. Um, and we notice the province ID, which is what I was joining on, has a value of six. Okay, so let's take a look at our provinces. Let's just browse that table. So if I sort by name, there's Buenos Aires there. And we look at the ID, and in this case, it's 06. So perhaps our two data sets aren't quite uh, congruent. So let's go back to our SQL and we'll just go ahead and drop that view. And I've got a third view saved here. If I just take a look at that, here I'm going to do a bit of cleansing in that view. So I'm going to cast the join conditions uh, to integers. Uh, so we'll do a bit of cleansing in our SQL. So the remaining part of the view is the same, but we've just done a bit of cleansing in our in our join condition there. So then let's go back to our map visualization and try running that again now. And so that looks a bit better. If we zoom in there, we can see we've got a Buenos Aires now. So I'm glad you're still with us, Buenos Aires. So that's the end of the demonstration. So who could use Visual Field? Well, teachers, students, Data analysts, GIS analysts, web developers, report writers, data scientists, field workers, emergency workers, anyone really with, with even a bit of SQL knowledge is helpful. Um, but please be patient. Uh, it takes a different way of looking at things. Some people have taken a look and they don't come back. So just be patient with some of the advanced topics like browsing of objects, sequences, custom functions, drill down and metadata. There's various built-in pages and tutorials to help out in this regard. So what can you do? For teachers, students, GIS analysts, data analysts, field workers, emergency workers, take a look, try it out, be patient. For web developers and report writers, explore, try to make sense of how the metadata is passed in the URL, uh, try to bring your workflows to life in a, in a web context. For authors of web libraries and frameworks, for example, charts and maps, Get ready to make your framework scalable and responsive for big data in the browser. Uh, at the moment, Leaflet is scalable up to about 120,000 features. Chart.js is scalable up to about 10,000 rows. Uh, we need to get ready for larger data sets. For open data sets publishers and custodians, please provide your relational data sets as CSV. There's standards that exist for CSV, so please continue to provide that. Include your spatial data in CSV as WKT. If you're providing spatial data sets as CSV and some uh, object or reference to a proprietary data format, you'd need a question really, is that an open data set? I'd encourage your use of WKT in your CSV data sets. Ensure your data sets are congruent and ensure that your data sets have HTTP course headers as part of your data sets. For publishers of web map tile images, uh, please include 
course headers uh, as your uh, on your tile images. That's so that tile images can be stored in an offline tile cache. For browser developers or those who have any input to web standards, can we either formalize I'm Shanahan and I am the chief of the formalize another standards-based SQL engine in the browser? And can we have some rich functionality with that SQL engine, whether that's some sort of spatial functionality or whether it can have interoperability with JavaScript functions? Can we have a native CSV parser as well? So my message, uh, really what I want to uh, get across is I predict one of the next evolutions of the web ecosystem will be in part about big data in the browser. And my message is not so much about visual field itself, but really there's a need for a relational big data storage in the browser. And then you can empower your end users, consumers of both you, yours and other data sets. And you can perform spatial analysis for those who may have nothing more than a low commodity phone and an unreliable internet connection. And there you have it. That's my introduction to visual field. I'm glad you're still with us, Buenos Aires. I hope to be online now to take your questions. Thank you. Well, that was an amazing talk. Thank you very much, Javis. Yeah, thank you for playing that. There was a slight interruption, but that, that was very, very good. So thanks, thanks yes, for that. I'm, I'm happy to take any questions now. So thank, thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so far, there are no questions. So please, if you want to ask something, don't hesitate to post it in the questions tab. Meanwhile, do you want maybe a comment about your video or something? Oh, yeah. What, what I would say is that, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, flux and dynamics going on in relation to uh, WebSQL. And I'm, I'm not so much campaigning for that, but uh, you know, it's on the cusp of being deprecated from all browsers. There's a lot of changes happening. So uh, I, I feel there's a real need for a relational data store in, in the browsers where the web ecosystem is currently heading. So if, if you find this useful, you need to get out there and campaign with um, with the browser developers to, to keep this functionality or to have it replaced with some standards based functionality to to really go forward with this. Yeah, that, that would be a, a message I'd like to get out there. Definitely. Well, we have a question. Uh, you mentioned the format should be CSV. Any thoughts about WebAssembly part of GDAL to support more formats? Uh, well, CSV is a it's it's a ubiquitous uh, format for uh, con consuming relational style data. Um, uh, so it's it lends itself very well to being imported into tables. Um, I'm not sure how that comes into play with WebAssembly. Uh, that's a that's a programming language where um, uh, CSV is like a like just a just a plain uh, delimited uh, data data sets. And there's a lot of CSV published uh, in a lot of uh, data providers uh, these days. So, yeah, it lends itself to being imported into relational data structures. I see. Thank, thank you. And um, well, so far we don't have any more questions. Let's wait for a minute or so. If not, we can call it here, if it's okay with you. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present here at Impossible Gene. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for for your talk, uh, actually. Um, see, we'll, uh, sorry, we will be seeing you around in Impossible Gene then. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks Take so care. Much. Yep, thank you. And then we will be proceeding to set up the next talk. We, well, we already did before, so the next talk will be starting at half past. Uh, so see you soon.